Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we're going to talk about AWS Savings Plan. This is a feature that AWS has rolled out in the later half of 2019. Ever since, it's been a very popular feature and it saves customers a lot of cash, a lot of dollars. So that's also another reason. And it's bringing tangible benefits to customers. So that's why it's very popular and very useful. So today we're going to talk about that. So within this video, so first we're going to cover what is AWS Savings Plan and what, the, what are the two types two different flavors of AWS Savings Plan. And then I'll use my own AWS account as an example to walk us through how we can really use and set up AWS Savings Plan to help me, a customer on top of AWS to save dollars, my own money. All right, that's about today's video. Let's dive in. First, AWS Savings Plan comes in two flavors. Number one is AWS Compute Savings Plan. This plan provides the most flexibility it helps reduce your costs by up to 66%. It's very similar to the convertible reserve instance types. And these, this plan automatically applies to any of your EC2 instances, regardless of region, instance family, operating system, or tenancy, including those that are part of ECS, EMR, or EKS cluster. For example, if you, you can shift from R5 to R6 instances, and you can move your workload from North Virginia to Oregon, to Australia, to Sydney, Singapore, that's totally fine. Or migrate from Fargate to EC2, you can still benefit from this savings plan prices along the way without having to do anything. This is the first flavor of AWS savings plan. The second flavor is EC2 Instance Savings Plan. This one provides the lowest prices. It offers savings up to 72%, just like standard reserved instances. This one applies to a specific instance family within a region and provides the largest discount. And this one automatically reduces your cost on the selected instance family in that region, regardless of availability zone, size, operating system, or tenancy. For example, your savings plan covers the usage of different sizes of the same instance type, such as C5 large or C5.4 extra large throughout this region, for example, PDX. You can even switch from Linux to Windows while continuing to enjoy the benefit without having to make any changes to your savings plan. It gives you a lot of flexibility to change your usage between instances within a family in that region. All right, with that said, Let's dive into my own personal AWS account. Let's take a look and see how AWS Savings Plan can be explored and used to set up. Let me just go to AWS Cost Explorer. All right, you see, I'm just being completely transparent. This is my actual usage. I don't have tons of usage because this is just my personal account. I don't have tons of sys services or websites going on. I just have a one tiny nano EC2 instance that hosts my tiny website. That's it. So let's take a look. What we can see is that today is August 1st. The reason I do it on August 1st is because the entire month of July is gone so that we can see my usage of the past month. So you can see my daily unblended costs from July 1st. Somehow the first day of each month, I always incur a very large bill in comparison to the other days. I don't really understand why. Like say today, it's August 1st. Yes, it's August 1st, here, you see here, you can see there is a little banner here. When I hover over here, you can see August 1st, it's like twice the amount of my regular, it's more than twice. And on July 1st, I got even higher. Maybe there is something that a one-time fee that they charge, but I'm not entirely sure. The, the only thing that I have, again, in my AWS account is EC2, one nano type in EC2 instance. That's that's all. That's why I don't have a lot of usage or costs in my AWS account. My total July cost is only $10.10 compared with last month, which, which is June, is 24% down. That's because in June, I just launched my website. I played with different services. For example, I was exploring, weighing the options between should I just host everything in my Postgres database just on the same EC2 instance or should I really use RDS? In the end, I decided to host everything on one EC2 instance because my traffic isn't so huge right now. When the day comes, 
I probably will separate it out. But at this moment, I'm making an informed decision to build a very monolithic architecture. Well, that's a separate topic. We'll go through that. Um, I'm thinking to make a video to talk about that like a year from now. After I've been running my website for a whole year, that should be a proper time to talk about that. For now, today, we'll just focus on AWS Savings Plan. So you see here, this is my, again, I'm just being very transparent about my AWS cost. So here, as you can see, this is my entire July cost. And how do you set up AWS Savings Plan is very easy. You can see there's a July trends here. You can either click this one. It says you could you could have saved $3.63 in the last 30 days if you purchased additional EC2 RIs, reserved instances. All right. If I go there, this is fine. The other option is that we can just go here. There is reservation under reservations tab. There is recommendations. We can just click here reservations. It says you can see there is estimated annual savings, which is $43.57. It's almost saving me half of the cost if I just keep using on on demand. That's what I had been using. I'm just spinning off an EC2 instance that is called on demand instead of reserving one dedicated EC2 instance just for my usage. All right. Again, this is my cost. We'll take a look at savings plan, see what are the options, what are the recommendations that they have for me, for my usage. Let's take a look. I don't think there's any. Let's take a look. So on the right side panel, there's savings plan, overview, inventory, recommendations. So let's click recommendations. So as you can see here, based on your selections, you don't have any savings plan recommendations available at this time. You may not be receiving recommendations for the following reasons. There are currently no savings opportunities identified. AWS hasn't identified any savings opportunities yet. Or your average on-demand spend is below $0.10 cents per hour during your chosen look-back period. $0.10 cents per hour. Let's take a look. $0.10 cents per hour. My usage is 30 cents per day. One day consists of 24 hours. So apparently my usage is definitely below the threshold that they would even recommend me. I don't expect that I'm going to use my usage of AWS is going to spike dramatically. So I'm fine with that. But the thing is that they don't recommend me to purchase the savings plan. This is for compute. The other type is EC2 instance for the same reasons. My average on-demand span is below 10 cents per hour. So they're, they're really not making any recommendations. So what I can do is that I'll just take whatever is recommended here, which is here. It's not really called AWS savings plan, but it's reservations. I'm using RI, reserved instances. I'll take this recommendation. You could have saved this. Let's just do this. All right, let's take a read. Based on your past 30 days of EC2 usage, we have identified a one year all upfront standard RI purchase recommendations to save an estimate $43.57 cents annually, representing a savings of 43% versus on demand cost. Well, I'm happy with that. I'll just happily take that recommendation, right? It says you can take action on this recommendation in the EC2 reservation purchase council. Now let's click there. Let's see. Reserved instances. You do not have any reserved instances. All right, that's correct. Now let me purchase Linux, Unix. That's correct. I'm using a Ubuntu 18.04, I think. Only show offerings that reserve capacities. Only show. I just checked my only one nanotype EC2 instance is running in 1E AZ. So I'm going to pick that. Tenancy is fine. Uh, default, that's totally fine. Offering cost. Any is fine. Payment option all upfront. That would be the cheapest term. Any. That's cool. Search. Effective rate. I'm going to buy 12 months. I don't think three years is just too long a term. I'm sure a lot of things will happen. I don't, I'm not going to pick that one. I'm just going to pick the standard one. I don't think I'm going to convert this one into anything else. So I'm just going to pick the standard, which is going to give me the heaviest discount. All right. I'll just add this one to cart view cart. Uh, $59. So I'll pay everything up front instead of like pay $10 per month. That's going to cost me $120 the whole year. So this one is asking me to pay like half the price. So I'm happy with that. Now let me order. Order submitted successfully. All right. I think I'm done. As you can see, now in my reserved instance dashboard, I do have T2 Micro. I do have one reserved instance. I've paid up front. 
Standard offering class is standard hourly payment processing. It's not finished yet. All right, easy as that. That's how you can purchase the, an AWS savings plan or just purchase an AWS RI to help you save money. All right, now let's talk about after you have purchased your RI reserve instance, how that can be used. For my case, when I purchased it on August 1st, I thought, oh, okay, it should be automatically applied to my running EC2 instances which based on their documentation, that should be the case. Let's take a look here. How reserved instances are applied. It says, if you purchased a reserved instance and you already have a running instance that matches the specifications of the reserved instance, the billing benefit is immediately applied. That's exactly my case. I have purchased a reserved instance and I have a running EC2 instance, T2 Micro. One more thing that you want to make sure that you, the family type, the tenancy, the operating system and everything else needs to match exactly. That's what it means by matching the specifications of the reserved instance. So before you purchase, before you hit the purchase button, you want to make sure that all of the specifications are exactly matching the EC2 instance, because if they don't match, they are not going to be applied. And as soon as you hit the purchase button, you're going to be charged. So for me, I picked the upfront charge. So everything I pay my whole year, 12 months charge upfront. So how can you make sure that you're purchased? reserved instances are being really applied to your running EC2 instance immediately so that you stopped using on-demand EC2 instances. Let's click billing. Go to billing. And then you can, what you can do is there's a sidebar on the side, on the left side, just click bills. And then there's estimated total, then there's bill details by service. So. What we want to do is you click Elastic Compute Cloud, which stands for EC2 again, click here. So what I have my EC2 instance is in running in US East 1, which is North Virginia. So click here. Here you can see my RI is being applied. So you can see here. So T2 micro reserved instance applied, T2 micro instance used. This is where you can verify that your purchased RI has been applied to your running EC2 instance. As you can see here, I have for this month of August, I have run my on-demand T2 micro instance for only 21 hours. That sounds about right because I purchased this RI on August 1st in the afternoon of August 1st. So let's give them a few hours to process to switch from my EC2 instance from on-demand type to reserved instance type. So from that moment onwards, you see my reserved instance hours has been 50 hours. So total is 71 hours at the moment. Today is August 4th, August 4th, which means three days past 72 hours total in the past three days. Right now it's in the morning of August 4th, which makes sense. It will give them like six or eight hours to process the bill. Of course, bill is not real time and doesn't need to be real time. So it makes total sense. So this is where you can see your reserved instance can be applied to your running EC2 instance. From this moment on, I'm built at my reserved instance rate instead of the on-demand rate, which is much more expensive. So all what this says is don't rush and just be patient. I actually cut a ticket. I cut a ticket to AWS supports asking them, see, this is the ticket that I cut uh, on August 2nd, because on the second day when I purchased the RI, I still don't see this. I still don't see that my reserved instance being applied. And I was worried that, oh, what's going on? If I don't get reserved instance benefit, is there anything wrong? And I double checked the family type, the tenancy, the operating system. Every specification is matching against the one that I have running. So I was confused. Just one day later, I was able to see this. And if we go to Cost Explorer again, we'll see. You can see here. Since July 1st, you have saved 14 cents as a result of your EC2 RI purchases, which is great because this is basically, basically two, three days, two days. It's not actually July 1st, it should be August 1st because I purchased RI for a whole year on August 1st. But the reason they put this way is because I have accumulated bills since June. That's why they recommended me to use 
RI since July 1st, but I didn't purchase that right away. I waited for one more month. Again, this is for reserved instance, how you can use reserved instance to cut your AWS spending bill to really maximize your AWS productivity using limited amount of dollars. This is one way. I just want to mention about this again because my bill is so low, as you can see, my bill is usually like this is this is here 31 cents per day so i don't qualify for the aws savings plan but the aws savings plan the principle is very similar to ri the one that i'm talking about today is ri reserved instance that's how you can apply this i hope this video helps people understand and make sense of this aws reserved instance or aws savings plan how that can really help your organization or help yourself to save your money or to make your bill spending on AWS more effective. If that's the case, just do me a favor and smash the like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm and help me out tremendously. I really appreciate it. And I have accumulated quite a lot of AWS videos. For example, how you pass AWS different sorts of AWS certifications on my channel. Feel free to check it out. Hopefully I'll just see you guys in a few short seconds. Thank you very much for watching.